evening, good evening guys. I am so sorry that I am late. I'm so late for this live. 45 minutes late for this live and I'll tell you why. So, Danny has a sponsor thing at school and it's tomorrow and he has to go around collecting sponsors. Now he's known about it for ages but he wants to message everyone, call everyone. Yeah, sorry guys, I was just checking if I was on Wi-Fi or 4G. Yeah, so he wanted to um, ring around family and everyone to see if he can get sponsored for his sponsoring thing tomorrow. And I was just like, yeah, don't mind me, Dan. Like, I just need my own phone for my life. <laughs> but he has to have it done. So anyway, He's done it, he's sorted it, he's hit his target, it's all good. So tonight's live is going to be, hey Lisa, hey Louise, tonight's live is going to be my story on me manifesting my dream car. So I wanted a Range Rover Evoque, like a particularly Range Rover Evoque, I wanted that for a really long time. I'd, I remember on when I did a vision board in 2016, or it might have even been 2015 that I did the vision board, but it was for 2016, because I actually drew it and I wrote 2016. It was on a black piece of card and I used a silver pen and I drew the, the car, badly drawn by the way, <laughs> for you why I didn't get it. <laughs> It wasn't the best run in the world, and I put 2016 on it. Now, something that had, like, I had a massive mental block at this stage is I knew my credit rating wasn't very good. Um, and it kind of, like, held me back from believing I could get it. And I just didn't want to buy the car outright. Like, even though I was earning really, really well, that was to buy that brand new outright all cash. <laughs> that was a that would have been a lot of money to part with, and my money mindset just wasn't at that place. It, it just wasn't going to happen. So it that wasn't really an option, and the finance side of things wasn't an option because my credit rating was really bad <laughs> at the time, really really bad. Like I wouldn't have even got like a two hundred and fifty pound credit card. Like it just wasn't great. So it kind of, although I really wanted it, I think at the back of my mind, I was just like, I'm never going to get it, never going to get it, never going to get it. Like, I kept telling myself I wanted it, but I'm never going to get it. So I actually think that it really, really slowed everything down. I became my own block. And you might relate to this. If you're ever trying to manifest anything that yourself, you might find yourself relating to this. Um, if you're wanting it, I'm just gonna invert some people's. Um, sorry guys, I thought I'd just invite a few people there. Because I was meant to do that earlier. But yeah, I don't know if you, uh, if you relate to this at all. If you're, by the way, if you're commenting, I can't see the comments. I never get the comments until after the live, which is so annoying because I'd love to chit chat with you all. But anyway, I was I was my own mental block for manifesting my car for such a long time because in my head I knew I didn't have the credit rating and I just thought that's just gonna it's just gonna mean that I can't have it. So as much as it went on my vision board at that particular time, it didn't come to me at that particular time and that, like I now I understand how manifesting works how your subconscious mind works I totally understand why it didn't come to me at that point because I just didn't make it real enough I didn't get close enough to it I didn't truly really believe that it was mine like every time I thought about it I also then thought very quickly but I can't have it because my like my credit rating was always just this like barrier it was like a block um so I didn't get it in 2016. However, if you guys tuned in to episode two 
last week where I shared my story about Dolly, you will know that 2017 was a year that I really spent a lot of time deliberately manifesting for Dolly's life. <laughs> like, for my life, for Dolly's life. Like, that was, throughout my whole time manifesting, that was the one that I really focused so hard on manifesting and I did everything. Like, I'm doing a 30 day manifesting challenge, by the way, it's starting on the 3rd of May. I was gonna do it the 1st of May, but we've got like bank holidays and things like that. So I thought, let's just start on the 3rd of May. So if you want in on that, then let me know. It's gonna to be to all my subscribers on the email and it's gonna be in here as well. Um, so I suppose just by you being in here, you've kind of already opted in and being on my email list, you've kind of already opted in. Um, but on that 30 day manifesting challenge, I'm gonna share with you so much of the things that I did, because it's not just one thing, it's a multiple, it's multiple of things. And what's really, really cool is I have just done it myself. I've done my 30 day manifesting challenge, but it's been so much more. For me, it's been like, a <laughs> like the name of this group, it's been a mindset and manifest, it's not just a manifest. I might even change it, change the name altogether and call it Mindset Manifest because I was typing out the emails today that you will receive, you'll receive an email every single day for the 30 days and the email really is like a blog, I was blogging, I'm kind of going off the story of the car but it's all going to come back round and you'll get it in a minute. Um, but when I was writing, it was like I was journaling, basically, from the day one of me doing my 30-day manifest challenge last month. And I was typing it up today. So I'm going to schedule out all the emails so that you get it every day. And I didn't realise, so some of you know that, you know, I've been changed, like, there was a lot, there's been a lot of changes that has gone on in the last 12 months for me when it comes to like career and things like that and companies that I've been working with and aligning with and I'm actually not particularly great with change I much prefer to be oh hubby thank you so much I love you thank you he brings me chamomile tea um I prefer stability <laughs> weirdly enough you probably don't think it, the amount that I've, there's so much upheaval and change. And that change had caused, like, massive, like, a knock to my self-confidence, a knock to my mindset, a knock to my manifesting skills. I was on a much lower vibration. So, and when you're on a much lower vibration, it's very, very hard to manifest the things you want. And I didn't realise how much of a hole I was in until I was reading the blog, blog, vlog, no it wasn't a vlog, that's a video, but until, my journal, until I was reading my journal and I was typing up day one in the email, I was like wow, I was in a really dark place, like not a dark, dark place, but for me, it was a dark, and it, reading it back, I, re I was like, I remember feeling that sad, <laughs> like, I remember feeling that down, um, and the crazy thing is, I always say this to you, I've said it to you on other lives, like, if you do this for 30 days, you will not recognise the person you are in 30 days time, and that, like, once again, I am right, <laughs> because I... I'm a different person now, 30 days later, after doing all of this. And it isn't just one thing. If it was just one thing, I would just tell you now, that one thing. It's so many things coming together on a consistent daily basis. Things you do in the morning, things you do in the afternoon, things you do in the evening, things you do like in your sleep. Like There's so many factors, which is why it makes sense that you're going to get a daily email and things like that. So, with all that said, the reason why that all of that makes sense is back in 2016 when I was writing that car, I really wanted the car and I had all these mental blocks 
2017 I'm manifesting for something so much more important than a car which is you know for Dolly like I said if you watched it last week you'll know exactly what I mean but what happened is that put me on such a high vibration I became a magnet for almost anything I literally that's probably the highest vibration I think I've ever been on and I really really did become this magnet and I was attracting everything literally anything and everything um including the car so i thought i really really wanted this car at the time i was driving an astra and it was a convertible astra and it had four seats and we were about to become a family of five so i knew that we needed the as soon as i found out i was pregnant i knew we needed another car and um me and Matt, just, it's just when I, you know what it's like, it just went on the back burner, went on the back burner, <laughs> as it always does. And um, by the way, guys, if you are commenting, I cannot see your comments, so I will reply to your comments after this live. But by this point, I'm now heavily pregnant. We are now in June time. And I remember me and Matt was having a conversation, like, this is the beginning of June. Me and Matt was having a conversation, like, we need to do something about it, what we're going to do. And I just thought, oh, what would what would I actually really love? And then I thought, no, the car that I would actually really, really love is a Range Rover Evoque. And I thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to book a test drive. I'm going to try and get as real and as close to this car as I possibly can and book a test drive. This is what I keep teaching my team. I'm teaching everyone about it. And yet I'm not following my own advice by getting as close and real to it as, to it as possible. Like really getting into the moment of driving the actual dream car, my actual dream car. How can I, how, how can I get as close to it as I possibly could? So I rang up, I booked a test drive. And when I turned up on the forecourt, I saw this sparkling red, Range Rover Evoque, it had cream seats, and I was just like, that is the one I want, that, I was like, that's the one I actually want, and the guy, the guy that I booked the test drive with, he drives around this corner with a white one, and I was like, I don't want a white one, <laughs> I want that red one, I want to test drive the red one, and he said, oh, you can't test drive the red one, you have to test drive, he said, they drive the same, it's the same everything, just that one's obviously a bit fancier, um, so I was a bit like, oh, okay, fine, I'll drive the white one. <laughs> I took it on a test drive and I just instantly felt like, oh my gosh. Because the other thing is, is I'm really little, so I can't actually drive, I can't drive any car. There's there's quite a few cars, I can't actually put the clutch all the way down, my legs are too short. <laughs> so I had to first check, actually, is the car right for me? Can I actually drive it? And I could, I was so impressed with how far the seat goes forward. I can put the clutch all the way down. I just loved it. It was a, it, it was such a smooth drive and it wasn't, uh, in my head, it was like this big, huge car. It's actually not a huge car at all. And I, I just instantly felt like, oh my God, I loved it. We went back to the showroom and I said to him, I want, the, I want it in red. And I want the cream seats, like, I want the one on the forecourt. And he said, that's the most expensive one that there is. And he said, for you to get that car, you would need to have squeaky clean credit rating. Even with a chunky deposit, you would need to have squeaky clean credit rating. And I said to him, I don't have squeaky clean credit rating. And he said, well, you won't be able to get that car. And I remember like the one of the best and worst things that you could ever say to me is you can't have it like it's just like fuel on flames like just anyone who tells me you can't have it I'm like okay well we'll see about that and I think I remember I said something along those lines when he said you can't have it I remember saying something like oh no I will have it <laughs> I will get it and I thought right, I was a bit he was polite enough and I didn't want to be rude to him but I was thinking I'm probably not gonna get it from here but I'm gonna get it um and then I went home with this like, almost this like diva in me that I just wanted that car. Now I've got this close to it, I wanted that car. And I just went home 
and I wrote on my board. I didn't even write it in fancy writing. I actually wrote it on a whiteboard. Um, and I wrote red Range Rover Vogue, cream seats, and I put £35,000 as well. Because um, I was being, what you need to do when you're manifesting anything, you need to be specific. I was actually watching Aladdin, the one with Will Smith in the other day, and there's, there's a part of it, and I was going to like rewind and just video because it's so relatable to this. But he said that when you're asking or when you're making a wish when, with the genie, when you're making a wish, you, the, the secret is to be as precise as possible. And that's actually the exact same thing when you're manifesting. And I knew that. So I wrote everything down. Red Range Rover Evoke, Cream Seats, August 2017, because that's when Dolly was due the end of August. So I had to have a five-seater car before she was born. And I thought, if I've got it by August, then she's due the end of August. It should be good. <laughs> that was my theory. So I wrote that on there. And then afterwards, I was watching lots of motivational videos, lots of mindset videos. I, I do that all day, every day. Anyway, I have it playing in the background. If I'm ironing, I'm having it in the background cleaning. It's in the background. First thing I put on in the morning is something motivational. Like, it's just constant. Um, But I was listening to one of them. And it said, focus, follow one course until successful. And I was like, love that. Wrote that on my board next to my goals because I thought that's so like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I need to do. That really resonated with me. And then there was another one that Tony Robbins said and it's something like, um, oh, I can't remember what it said. Something like raise your standards. You get what you must have, not what you want to have. So if you make your, if you make what you want, your standard, your must. Hey, Tina, has the sound gone? Someone should have just seen, has the sound gone? I hope not. Just throw me some hearts or thumbs or something if you can hear me okay. Um, I really hope the sound's not gone because I'm not getting any comments other than yours, Victoria. Um but um and it's only that one I've got so if you've written anything else I've missed that but yeah so there was another quote that said your standard oh Kirsty says she can hear it. oh yay cool that your standard has to oh no sorry your desire has to become your standard so we always get what we must have not what we want does that make sense like does that like that really resonated with me because I thought I need to, what I need to do is turn the Range Rover into a standard. Just like a standard is that you, you know, it's a standard that you eat breakfast or it's a standard that you breathe in air. It's a standard for you to brush your teeth. It's a standard for you to wash. It's a standard for you to eat dinner. Those things are our basic standards. It's a standard for you to have a certain temperature in your house that you will not let it go below. It's a standard for you to have a duvet on your bed or a pillow on your bed. Like these are standards that none of us will go below. And the higher you set your standard, like you won't go below your standard. Some people will absolutely not work for less than 30 grand a year. Some people will absolutely not work for less than 100 grand a year. Some people would laugh if they're not getting, or, or would freak out if they're not hitting 100 grand a month. Like, everyone's standard is different, and it's up to you where you set that bar and where you set that standard. So I thought, right. So that quote went on my board and I thought that's what I need to do. I need to make the Range Rover my standard, not not just a want, not just a desire, but the absolute minimum requirement. Still not fully knowing how, like, like I said, I wasn't going to pay for it outright and I didn't have the credit rating for it either. So anyway, it was all on my board and I just let it, I, I kind of let it sat there. And I didn't obsess over it. And the reason why I didn't obsess over it is I was still... Although, as we were getting much later in the pregnancy with Dolly and they were giving us a lot more, like, all clear and all of that, by that point, there was that anxiety. So I was continuing with doing my, you know, my manifesting, my guided meditation, all of the things. 
And my Dolly was my focus, so I didn't focus on the car, which is another thing that they say when you really want to manifest something. If you hold on to it too tight, if you obsess with it too much, you can end up going in the other way. Um, and like sometimes that can happen, like you can obsessively want that car, and then because you're obsessively wanting it, you're kind of going down the route where. It's like a desperation rather than a desire and a belief you're going to get it. And when you go down the route of de desperation, you're actually on a frequency that is telling you you can't have it because you're so desperate for it, if that makes sense. But because I was so focused on Dolly and making sure she's okay and that I'm going to have the healthiest baby and healthiest pregnancy, and that was my focus, it was written on the board. I was focused in making it my standard but I really did kind of let it go. I was just like, it's just there. It's just there. Anyway, fast forward time. So, so I wrote it on the board at the end of June. And honest to God, at that point, I genuinely, I can 100% say to you that at that point, I didn't know how I would get it. I didn't. And I, it didn't even cross my mind. I, I put it on the board, put some quotes on it that really meant something and let it go, literally let it go. We're moving on now. We're in July, coming up to the end of July. And I remember this like it was yesterday. Me and Matt were chatting away and we're like, what, what are we, we really need to sort out a car. Like we literally need to sort out a car. We need to do something. Dolly will be here next month. The end of August is when she was due. We've got a four-seater. It, it, I, I hated that car, the Astra. I hated it so much. And here's the thing. The whole time that I kept saying, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I was having nothing but problems with it. And I remember one day saying to myself, the more, the more anger and frustration you pour into this car, the more it's going to give you back. So you're going to have to start loving it. You're going to have to start appreciating it. You're going to have to start saying thank you to it. And when I was doing that, that's when all the good stuff started to unfold. So again, that's another side to it. But we were having this conversation, what we're going to do. And because we didn't yet know, like there was still that kind of belief that I couldn't get the Range Rover because of the, because of the um, credit rating. And I had no idea how I would get that. So we wasn't actually having a serious conversation of how we're going to get the Range Rover. We were just like, what are we going to get for now? And um, we just didn't know. So we were like, do we hire it for now? Do we just hire a car until we've worked out what we really want, till there's a better solution? Do we lease one? Um, do we buy like a cheaper one that we was willing to part money with? <laughs> like, I don't know, just like a five grand car or something like that. Um, we just didn't know what what direction we were going to go in. So Matt was like, oh, I found these companies that's leasing. And um, he said, that, you know, we could get this for this price or this for that price and whatever. And again, we could probably get like paying a monthly thing. We could have got quite a nice car. And he, I'm the type of person that I'll just get on the phone. Like I'll get on the phone and I want... Um, yeah, I like answers and I, I want I want something done like this. So Matt's like the researcher and I'm the action taker. And um, so I started ringing around and getting quotes. And I remember there was this like a Mitsubishi or something like that. And the quote for the lease on that, I was just like, <laughs> really? Like, no, like I just couldn't, like the, the leasing prices was so high. I, I it really surprised me how high it was. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not putting no. <laughs> so that was it. But I said to Matt, look, there's got to be there's got to be companies out there with a better price, like a more competitive price or something. Let's just keep calling around and seeing, and you know what deals there are on car hire and car leasing. Because that's the route we were going down. Anyway, googling away, doing my research, I ring up this company. And I start asking him, you know, for cars and quotes and blah, 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 blah. And he said that they don't, they don't do leasing. They do, like, you buy it. Like, you buy it with finance. You buy the cars from them with finance. So I said to him, no, like, I can't, 
I said, no one's going to lend me a pen at the moment. So it, I don't, I really don't want to waste your time. And he said, he was just pleasantly persistent. And normally that doesn't go right with me. It doesn't, if someone's too persistent with me, my guard just goes really, like, really up, especially if I know that it's going to waste my time and their time and it's going to lead to rejection and I just don't, I, did, I just wasn't on that vibe. But for some reason, he was really pleasantly persistent. That didn't put me off. That made me think, do you know what? Okay, fine. We'll go with it. And I did say to him, I was like, it's, I, I am worried about wasting your time, but we'll go with it. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not doing this every day, like for everyone that I ring, but we went with it anyway. And I gave him my details and everything you do when you're like applying for credit and stuff like that. And he said, oh, I'll get back to you in an hour. And I, I said to him, I'm not having a guarantor. I don't, I don't like other people being involved in my business. I don't want a guarantor, anything like that. And he was like, yeah, no, that's fine. I'll give you a call back in an hour. Well, an hour rolled round and he didn't call me back. And I'm like, what a waste of time. Like, I'm really flapping and getting animated all towards Matt. Like, can't believe he wasted my time. He's got my hopes up. Rah, rah, rah. And um, I was just fully convinced that he wasn't ever going to call back because I didn't think that we would get accepted or anything. And then I missed the call in the morning and I recognised that it was that area code and I missed it and I, I heard the voicemail and it was really like, the voicemail, it really wasn't clear, but I'm sure I heard something like, good news. Um, and even then I was saying to Matt, I was like, oh, I bet they're going to ask for a guarantor or something like that. What a waste of time. Anyway, I rang him up and he said, good news, you've been accepted. And I just, like, I thought, I don't want to blow this. I don't want to ruin this. So I'm not going to be like, oh, but I did say to him, is that with a guarantor? Because I'm not doing the guarantor. And he said, no, you've been completely accepted. So I was like, oh, my God. And he said, so, but you do have to get the car from our car showroom. And at this point, I'm thinking is this a scam? Like, have I accidentally come across like a scammy company or something like that? Anyway, he told me to go over to the website of their showroom. And I'm not joking. I went over to the website of their showroom and the first car that came up, like on their homepage was a Lamborghini. I thought, are they taking the piss out of me? <laughs> like, yes, I'm doing well, but no, I'm not in the Lamborghini level yet. Um, and I just thought, oh my God, like, I, again, I just thought, they're t it's a joke, like, it's a joke. And then Matt was like, no, hold on, look, they have actually got cars suitable for us. And Matt was really having his eye on a BMW, because BMW was a car that he really, really wanted. Um, so th at this point, Matt's like really looking into it, getting all excited. And um, I then... When I was like looking back into it after thinking it was a joke from the whole Lamborghini thing, just for fun, I thought, right, I'll put in the search bar, Range Rover Evoke. The first one that came up at the very, very top, there wasn't many on there, but the very first one that came right to the top of the page was a red Range Rover with cream seats. And I was just like, shut up, like knock me down with a feather. That's my car. That's my car. That's this on my board. That's the one. That's the one on my board. So I rang up the guy and I said, I can't remember how much it was now, but I said, can we, can we, because he said we'd been accepted, but he didn't even tell me how much for. Um, so I said, can we get that one? Like, would we be able to get that one? He said, oh, let me punch through the numbers. And he said, yeah, that's fine. You've been accepted for that. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> like, no freaking way. Anyway, I'm getting excited and we, we, we go for it. Like, we're like, okay, let's go for that one. And Matt was like, Come, what about the BMW? I was like, no, Matt. Like, I had to show my vision board. I was like, I've asked the universe and he, he has delivered. And if I don't accept what he's delivered, I'm never going to get anything else ever again. So we must accept this. <laughs> So he was like, I'm never going to win, am I? He knew at that point there is, you know, no chance that... There was just no chance that he was going to get his BMW when 
it was like there. It really was like I asked the universe and the universe delivered in the craziest way. I can honestly tell you, I, I did not... I didn't even test drive this actual car. This car showroom was like the other side of the country. It was just really, really bizarre. Um, and yeah, I had this weird, like I was just going with the flow of it. The, the showroom was really, really legit. It was actually a very, very fancy showroom. And it did have, it had like Ferraris and Lamborghinis in it as well. So it wasn't just like this shoddy, cheap showroom. Hold up. It was actually a really lush showroom, really, really nice. Um, and it was all legit and it was all good. Thank God. And then like the story, so the story gets even more funny and more exciting. So they ring us up. It's now the end of, end of July and they ring us up saying the car will be available for you to pick up on the 5th of August. I can't remember if it was the 3rd of August or the 5th of August. I'm almost, no, I'm almost certain I'd put money on it was the 5th of August because and I'll tell you why later down, down the line but I'm pretty sure it's 5th of August anyway I said to Matt look it's quite a journey to get there why don't we make her like why don't we just go up there we'll stay in a hotel just me and him get someone to have the kids like just have some time just me and him because after that we knew that we were going to have another baby and things are going to get a bit more hectic. It's going to be harder to, for us to just have one-to-one -one time. I was like, we can have a meal, stay in a hotel, make a weekend of it, drive back in our fancy new car. Um, so he he was just like, okay, yeah, cool. So we booked the hotel and stuff like that. Anyway, we drive it. We're going to, we're traveling to um, the the show we were like so we're making our way up there and we thought we'll go on train because obviously we're driving back and then from the train station we got a taxi to the hotel now here's where it gets really funny and really freaking exciting and weird so those of you who know law of attraction the things that you look out for are white feathers kept seeing them 111 rainbows all of those are signs of law of attraction we are driving to the hotel i swear to god this god's on this trip we are driving to the hotel in the taxi and in the sky was a rainbow and the rainbow finished on the hotel that we were staying at. It literally stopped on the hotel we were staying at. Then we got our room and the door opposite our room, so it wasn't our room number, but it was the door so that, the, you know, the moment we walk out of our door, we see the door opposite, it was 111. And it was just like, all the signs were just there, constant, 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 constant. I'm pretty sure our train was like at 11.11 as well, because I remember seeing 111 all day long. And um, then, so we have a really lovely evening, we go out for dinner, and I'm heavily pregnant at this point, so I said to Matt, like, I just want to, you know, we've got a really exciting day tomorrow, I just want an early night, really. Turn the lights off, gone to bed. Next minute I know, my phone's pinging like crazy. Like, I'm literally like, where's the fire? What's going on? Why is my phone going 10 levels crazy? Now, Charlie, who is my best friend, she, we were, at the time, we were both in Unique, the company that, you know, we, we were in for quite a while. And um, she was my upline in that company as well. And I look at my phone because it is going off like ding, 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 ding. For so, like something, someone's desperate to get hold of me. That it must be an emergency. It's going off like crazy. And it's a message from Charlie, and I've been added to this group chat as well. And Charlie was like, Charlie knew that I was on my way to picking up the car the next day, and she went, Tash, you've got to see this. So. You know what it's like when you've decided you're tired and you're going to sleep and the lights are off and everything, but you're like blinded by the phone a little bit. And the next minute I see is the company, Unique, that we'd already been presenters for for a few years by now. And it, they never, like the owner of the company, he always said he was never going to do a car plan. He, he, he just was so against it. And people were asking for it all the time. He was so against it. 
And then I had to just like read it. He announced the the same weekend that night that I was in the hotel. The same weekend I was picking up the car. They were having their convention in America, so it was like at night for us, but daytime morning for them. And um, he was he had just announced that we get company car bonuses. And I was at the top of top rank of that company at the time when he made that announcement. And the amount of money that I got as a top rank presenter for the car bonus was the amount of money that I had to pay for my car the next morning. And then he went, and if you've qualified for it, which I had because I was already promoting, I was ranking, I was being paid as that rank. I wasn't, you know, I, was, I didn't just have the title, but I, I was well in a very strong structure of actually being paid as that rank. He went, if you're that rank, you get your money now. So they put money, they, it was like, go and check your pay quicker. We were getting paid by pay quicker. Go and check your pay quicker. The money was in there. So now, not only did I manifest this car, but now it's being paid for by money I didn't even expect, like more extra money that I didn't even expect to come in. And it was just like, nobody believed, nobody, everyone who knew me knew I was telling the truth, but people who didn't know me, everyone was saying, oh my God, she knew that there was a car, a company car bonus coming. A hundred percent did not know. Like I couldn't have even timed it better if I tried. I did, like I did not know. It was the biggest shock to me. I sat bolt upright. I was like whacking Matt. I was like, oh my god, Matt! <laughs> like you need to see this. And I, the company car, like the bonus paid for the car the whole time. So. Not only did I actually manifest receiving the car, on the day that I received the car, I actually manifested the amount of money that I was about to part with to pay for the car. And, yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. And what was really good, so we got it on the, the 5th of August, and the reason why I'm pretty confident that it is the 5th of August is because Dolly ended up being born three days, three days later. I ended up having her three weeks early, I was induced, so I, they, um, I think I told you this on, on the story last weekend, last weekend, last week, that I, you know, I had a gut feeling that there's something that didn't feel right, I went and got checked at the hospital, they confirmed something was wrong, they induced me, so I ended up having her three weeks early, and I literally got the car just in time. So three days before she was born is when I actually picked up the car. Um, but yeah, that's, that's you know, it, it, it's just the craziest thing because I went from really, really believing that I couldn't have it to getting close to it, to manifesting it. But the way it unfolded where you, the signs were there the whole time, the 111 opposite our hotel room, the rainbow finished, like literally the rainbow, like where does that, have you ever seen the end of a rainbow? It literally <laughs> sat on top of the hotel that we were at. And then like knock me down with a feather. If you have a look at the screenshot of the day that I took the car for the test drive. So that screenshot that I posted in this group, was um, where I was actually going for the test drive. I hadn't ordered it or anything at that point. That was that was just the test drive day. That was the day that salesman said that I can't have it unless I've got squeaky clean credit rating. The, the, the time I posted that post was 11.01. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like it was always written in the stars. It was always there. Like if, this, if only I paid attention to the signs, but the, it was always there. And there's probably signs that was going on even more than that around me that I may never have even noticed. So yeah, that was my, that's my manifesting car story where I did manifest my Range Rover with cream seats somehow. Uh, to this day, I couldn't tell you how I got past for that credit rating. I just don't know. The universe works in mysterious ways. And this is the thing. When you put it out there 
to the universe like mysterious things happens and and it really does and the fact i th- i truly do believe that where i was so heavily focused on dolly i was raising my vibration and this is the key is raising your vibration raising that frequency because then you become this positive magnet to so many other things around you. Like, I was attracting everything. Did you regret Queen City? No, I didn't actually, because they were leather. Well, they were like, I don't know if they're actually leather leather, but they're like, easy to clean. <laughs> so, no. Um, no, they did. And it's still, like, I, lo- I just love that car. It's my little car. I love it so much. Um, yeah, and like... It's just, yeah, that's my car story. Like, can you believe it? It's I, I still, to this day, just think it's crazy. And just how it unfolded, where the company that I was working for announces the car bonus the, the night that I'm picking it up. Well, not the night, that, you know, the, the time that I was there to pick it up and that, the way it all unfolded and the way they said the money's in your account now. Like, <laughs> you just couldn't write it. You really couldn't write it. And I just, I remember coming home, we drove the car home, and the first thing I was like, give me my whiteboard. And I said to Matt, you have to take a photo of me holding the whiteboard of me putting Range Rover, standing next to the actual Range Rover on the drive. And like, the other thing is, is I thought it was 43, I was, I swore it was 43, but it's not, it's 35. This tells you how bad I am with numbers. This is why I let Matt deal with the numbers. But the car was actually less than 35 grand. It was, to, if I was to buy it outright, it was less than 35 grand, but I did get it on that finance. But when you added the APR, the what I was paying was 35 grand. Because I remember being really like, knock me down with a feather again that when I wrote 35 grand on the board, I don't even know why I wrote 35 grand. I don't, I genuinely, I couldn't tell you why I wrote 35 grand. I can't remember that part of the story. I must have got, I must have plucked the figure out from somewhere for some reason. Um, but the car was actually less than 35 grand, but with the APR on top, it was 35 grand that I was paying. So I manifested paying out 35 grand as well. Like that's how precise everything on that board became. And this is why, you know, be really precise. And that's the thing, you attract everything. Even if you, you know, I could have paid less for that car, but no, I had to write down the price of it too. (laughs) Um, So yeah, that is my car story i really really hope that you enjoyed this car story and i hope it's giving you guys you know if you are trying to get something that feels like it's impossible i hope this story is giving you a bit of like understanding and vision and desire and hope and knowledge that you're going to be able to get it no matter what it is you will there the universe will find its way to you when you get on that frequency um and I'm going to be doing my 30 day manifest challenge. So if you haven't, I think everyone that's in this group has actually subscribed to my emails. Um, or most people, not everyone gave me their email address when they, when they requested to join. And obviously I'm still going to accept you in. You don't have to subscribe to my email to be part of this group, but everyone who did give me their email addresses, you're already subscribed to my email. So you will be getting the emails on a daily basis. I'll be posting here. Um, and I'm going to try my best to share as much with you. I feel like it's actually, there's so, so many components to raising your vibration. And it's not, it, it depends on where you're at. But if you're in a place where you're not happy or you're feeling down or you're feeling negative, you're feeling doubtful, um, which actually was where I was, well, when I started my 30 day manifesting challenge, it was over, it was over a month ago. It wasn't 30 days. It was, it was over a month ago now, quite a bit over a month ago. Um, and like I said earlier on in this slide, like when I, when I was typing up my email today for that day one to schedule it to go out, oh my God, I, I read it and I actually felt really sad for me. (laughs) 
I was like, oh my god, I was I was so sad, and I and I'm reading. It, I thought oh, I look so lost. I sound so lost, and and I know exactly why. I know why I was. I know there was a lot of change and upheaval that I wasn't anticipating, and it kind of like I said, I don't do change very well. Um, I like I actually love to be in my flow. You know when everything feels easy and you're vibing high. And it really did knock me. And I didn't realise how bad. Until, well, no, I, I did know it was bad. But reading it back, I was like, oh, my God. like, ah. Oh. But 30 days later, and I am a different person altogether. Like, I'm just... And I'm still working on myself. I work on myself every, every day. So I'm still raising that vibration even more than it is now. But this it's because I know that journey... This is why I do actually feel really excited for every single one of you who does want to do this with me. I'm going to just continue to carry on with it. Um, because it's not just about manifesting, but it's actually raising your vibration. It's going to help your mindset, your self-belief, your self-confidence, getting clarity. You're going to find more opportunities and things just coming your way, positive things coming your way. You might find yourself earning more money. Your money starts to duplicate and multiply. You might find that you're gaining new friends, new friendships. You might find that your relationship's going to get better if it's not. It might be good, but it might be, you know, it'll go great. And that's what I've noticed with this 30 days. Like, my income has increased. I've I've met some new friends, amazing new friends. Um, me and Matt is the best we've ever been. And we've already, we've always been great, to be fair, bar, like, the odd occasion where... <laughs> as we all do with our husbands um but he we, we we really are the best we've ever 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 been so this is so much more than just like manifesting something like, like i'm not gonna i love manifesting things but do you know what i mean like it's going to i hope for you guys that you get that transformation in areas of your life that will just make life and even happier even if you're really really happy and even happier place to be so yeah let me know if it is something that you're interested in maybe um i'll do that with my own briefs but maybe like just pop it in the in the group in here like maybe do a post do a post with a selfie introduce yourself and say you know i want to hi my name's like lauren i'm just going to use your senior name there hi my name's lauren i am Da, 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 like a mum of three, mum of four, mum of five, mum of one. I I'm I love my manifesting, or I want to learn more about manifesting, or you know why you're in this group, why you've enjoyed this group so far, and that you want to do the thirty day manifesting challenge. Um, because then it'd be cool. It'd be nice for us to all to get to know each other and see a bit of history of each other. Like I know a lot of you, and I know you know, you lot know a lot about me. But it's kind of like getting to know each other as well, which will be fun. Um, so yeah, feel free to post in this group an introduction. Introduction is this the public one? Is it Victoria? It's a private group. It's set to private now. It was public originally when I first set it up. Um, but it is now set to private, so everything that you post in this group is only for you guys to see, and obviously any new members that does come in, but it, again, that will all be set to private. Um, but this is the one that, like, it's the free coaching, so Fearless Female Network, for instance, that's, like, paid for, private, very exclusive. This one is everyone's invited, but... That's good. I don't want the rest of my face. No, no, it's private to this group. Everything's set to private, yeah. Um, but yeah, feel free to share what you want to manifest if you do. Don't feel like you have to, but feel free to share with us so that we can cheer you on. Um, and it'll be a really nice environment. I think it's going to be a really nice, fun 30 days. I actually think the first, say the first seven days, you actually it's going to be harder than you think. It's going to... I struggled, like, looking back on my, when I was journaling it, I struggled the first seven days or so, was finding my feet, even even meditating, I couldn't focus, I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't, 
it was hard to just get into the swing of it. So, um, and I'm really, I'm really glad I journaled it all because then when I send out the emails, you will see for yourself, like if you're struggling to just get the gist of it or get into it, you will know that's normal and not like, you know, we're not all born as these perfect meditating manifestors and things like that. It's actually a bit, it takes a while to find your feet with it. So if that's how you feel when you get started, then that's fine. Or if you're worried, oh, I don't think I'm going to be good at it because I can't focus when I'm meditating and all of that, that's also fine. Um, this is something I'm really interested in. I'm really, really pleased. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so sorry I'm late. I was late for the live. Danny had to collect his sponsorships and use my phone to ring around the family to get sponsored for this football thing he's doing tomorrow. So I was like... <laughs> Don't mind me, Dan. Don't mind me. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, guys, for for tuning in. And I will speak to you all soon. Speak to you later. Bye.